somebody emailed me and he said, um, I became a Christian about two years ago and I found myself in the situation that you said you found yourself. Basically, I used to party and go out all the time and have a blast. But when I became a Christian, it seemed like I had to put all the fun aside because most of the Christians I know were content to just go bowling, watch a movie or do a Bible study. Now, I don't right. hate those things, but doing those things again and again gets so repetitive and boring. I remember you said in some of your videos and something similar happened to you when you became a Christian and were not having any fun and couldn't relate to the people around you anymore. I am in desperate need of fun. The only people I know throwing parties and doing actual fun things are also not Christians. And I don't want to put myself in that situation because I would be, it would be easy for me to compromise my values. Yeah. How did you solve this dilemma? Where would you recommend starting? So <laughs> how about you? What, tell us how you solve that dilemma. Because I, I believe every single Christian faces some level of that. Right. Well, uh, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I would love to answer it, I think, in a practical way. But at first, I think I need to go to what really got, what really did it for me was back in 2011. It was Christmas Eve. This is part of my testimony. You know, I was going out quite a bit back then. I had my uh, college experience after college, actually. And I was introduced into Uptown here in Dallas. And I was, I'm in the film industry as well. So I was going on these red carpet, you know, galas and things. And, you know, you go out and it's just like became a, a cycle of my life. And that's when I started sleeping around, um, you know, back then. And I remember it was Christmas Eve. I was in my loft in downtown by myself. And uh, I just felt God tell me, uh, hey, let's watch Braveheart. And it's just, it, he was the coolest. I mean, I think about it now. He's the coolest dad. Uh, to say, son, let's watch, let's watch a movie. And he used that movie to really grab me and refocus me. He was pressing all my filmmaker buttons, you know, and I love that movie, but also he was showing me the way that William Wallace was a man of vision. Ultimately he would die, you know, for the vision and people followed him, people respected him. And I think I've talked, I've, we've texted about this a little bit too, um, Rob, you know, about what a, what it's, what a, how a warrior is, you know, how a warrior behaves when he's in, you know, has a mission. So, I say all that to say, that's when God put Proverbs 29, 18 on my heart. And that's like a life verse for me. It says, when there's lack of vision, people cast off restraint. Um, the blessed is he who keeps the law. But I always say the reciprocal of that is when there's clear vision, there's great discipline. So um, that's a foundational thing, I think, uh, for me, is knowing, having a clear vision of who you are in Christ and what has he called you to do. And so if you're on a mission for that um, and you have clarity and you're moving toward that vision of, for me, it's making a film trilogy about David one day, building body mountain, this business that he's given me. And that's really exciting and really fun to see that vision come together. I'm sorry, I'm getting to the point here. Um, but I think knowing that first will help you uh, be disciplined and be able to say no to the things that you know are going to get in the way of you accomplishing what God's called you to do and who he's called you to be, uh, which is a man of God or a mighty woman of God and what that looks like. So I think that uh, helped me, first of all, say no to a lot of things that I think could get in the way of me accomplishing that. So I think having that clarity is really important in pursuing and asking God. And as far as like just doing fun things, um, you know, it's like, okay, what are the things that fill up my emotional energy bucket what do I need? What do I go to find the core of? What are the things that I really need that fill me up mentally, emotionally, spiritually? And um, I really thrive on connection, real conversation. So things that are fun for me are like getting a bunch of men together and sitting around a fire and having maybe a glass. I mean, if you don't want to drink, that's fine. But I, I enjoy a good glass of scotch and a cigar. Um, and that's really fun for me, you know? Um, and so I'm really intentional about building a community of solid men around me that I can deep dive with, be vulnerable with, you know, and, but also finding ladies and, and doing, you know, that and having those kind of things. So I think that's really what we need is that connection. So yeah, if you just get together and go bowling and there's never really a connection with the people and you don't feel like you can be vulnerable, you don't feel like you're getting really sharpening each other or growing in relationship. Yeah, that's going to wear out, I think, pretty quickly. So that was a long answer, but I don't know. It made all sense no, in my good. head. So. No, actually, Lori, Lori Lockamy is watching now with us. I'm looking at my phone and on, she's, we're oh, yeah? on Facebook, and she was my life coach. I mean, for me, this whole journey for me started 
at least restart it when I got clear about the, my vision for my life. So I agree hundred percent. You have to know why you're doing it. And then as yeah. you, if you have a strong why you're, you know, you're less likely to quit. You push through all the adversity. But what I did is I went through the exact same thing. This guy said where I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have any sources of fun, you know, right. Bars and girls were all my sources of fun. So I cut those out sure. and I had right. to cultivate a community of people like what you're saying, um, right. just to really do life with. So I would say, you know, you can start with the people in your church. If they're not doing things that you would find fun, Cole, you start organizing things for them to do. Don't, don't wait right. for them to organize it. If you don't like what they're doing, you start putting on things to do. And what you'll find is like, maybe you want to push the envelope a little bit. You don't want to go bullet. Maybe you want to go see a band player or maybe you want to have some scotch around the fire with your friends. That's fine. I guarantee you there'll be some people at your church that want to do those things. They're probably suffering in the same way you are. And then what you do is you invite your unsaved friends to those places because that's a much easier place for them to meet. The unsaved right. people probably don't want to go bowling either because they're going to be like, this is lame. But if right. you start doing things that are a little bit edgy, that start scratching your itch, not only are you going to find people that are in your church that are going to want the same things, but you're going to find people that aren't there yet will come and their lives will be changed just through the relationships.